Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to take a look at single phase half wave control rectifier with RL load and freewheeling diode. So let's get started. This is a circuit diagram. In our previous video, we saw the single phase half wave control rectifier with RL load alone. In this video, we have to focus on what is the impact of the freewheeling diode that is used and how does that play an important role in improving the performance of the circuit. So we're going to look at the complete operation of the circuit along with the waveforms and also with some of the analysis um, such as deriving the output voltage expression in terms of average and RMS values. So now let us consider the waveforms and the operation in parallel so that it will be very clear for you to understand it. We're going to consider a sinusoidal voltage source that is Vs is equal to Vm sin omega t. Let us extrapolate and we're going to apply a gate pulse at instant say equal to alpha. So let us say this pulse is basically alpha. So this is the instant at which I will be applying a gate pulse. Now what happens when we apply a gate pulse at this instant? What will be the output voltage? What will be the output current? So these things is what we have to observe very carefully in any type of analysis, especially for rectifier circuits. So let us consider the circuit diagram again. So if you carefully observe, the source voltage waveform Vs is basically positive, isn't it? That means Vs will have a polarity plus and minus. So positive is appearing at this point anode and negative is appearing at this point. Now, since we have applied a gate pulse at this instant, the SCR will be in forward conduction mode. That is, it acts as a short circuit. Since negative is connected to the anode of the freewheeling diode, it is acting as open circuit. As a result, the freewheeling diode is acting as open circuit and there will be no flow of current through this path. So what will be the direction of the flow of current from the source? It will start from here, it will move in this direction and then it will go to the load in this particular direction. So let us consider the output voltage to be equal to V out in this case. So the voltage across the inductor, what happens is that the inductor slowly starts charging because of the flow of current. And let us say the voltage across the inductor is given by VL that is equal to L into DI by DT. VL is given by L into DI by DT. So in this cycle, what happens is clearly understood, isn't it? The current flows through the load and the output voltage V out is the voltage that is available. So how do we analyze the waveforms over here? With respect to V out, if you carefully observe over here, initially it is starting at zero. The reason is because we are only firing the thyristor at this instant. That means previously it was open circuited because there is no gate pulse provided to it. As a result, it is acting at zero output voltage. Now what will happen? Because of the short circuit, that is because of the alpha firing of the thyristor, there is voltage that is developed at the load. This voltage is basically equal to the supply voltage. The reason is because if you carefully see this path, there is no other components that is going to consume power. That means this is acting like a short circuit at this point. Whatever we are supplying is directly appearing at this point. As a result, what happens is that the output voltage will basically follow the source voltage waveform. So it is rapidly moving to the voltage at which the source was and it will follow the direction or it will follow the waveform of the supply voltage. So whatever is the supply voltage will directly be appearing at the output. So V out will be having this shape. I hope this point is clear. Now what will happen to I out? I out also starts at zero because there was no flow of current because it was acting as open circuit at the load, isn't it? And then what happened? I out will start increasing gradually. The reason is because we are having an inductor which is an energy storing element. The inductor starts storing the energy and there is some amount of power that is consumed at the resistor as well. So the current at the load will slowly start increasing and it will keep on going to a maximum value in this particular fashion at this instant. I hope this point is clear. Now what happens during negative half cycle? 
So negative half cycle starts at this instant, isn't it? So during negative half cycle, let us again consider the circuit diagram for easier analysis. The supply voltage is basically going in the negative direction and positive direction over here. So previously we had seen that the inductor starts with charging the polarity plus and minus that is L into di by dt, isn't it? Now what will happen is during negative half cycle, the inductor will reverse its polarity according to the property of Lenz law and the output voltage across the voltage across the inductor will be given by VL is equal to L into di by dt. This voltage will actually forward bias the freewheeling diode. So anode is connected to positive and cathode is connected to negative. As a result, freewheeling diode will be forward biased and whatever energy that is available at the inductor will start flowing through this path. It will flow through this path and then it will return here in this particular fashion. The thigh resistor is basically acting as open circuit because of the voltage that is developed at the inductor as well as the supply which is reverse biasing the thigh resistor. Very very important observation. So what happens to the output voltage waveform then? The output voltage waveform during negative half cycle will be equal to zero, isn't it? Because this is acting as a short circuit. When you are connecting a voltmeter to measure the voltage, the current, the voltage across this point will be equal to zero, isn't it? Because this is a short, if you carefully observe this point, if you measure, it will be equal to zero. As a result, you will see the output voltage becoming equal to zero till the next cycle. I hope this point is clear. Now what will happen to the current waveform? The current will slowly stop at some instant, but it will st start decaying. It will basically start decreasing. The reason is because the energy that is stored in the inductor is still circulating at the load, but the resistor is consuming the power, isn't it? When the resistor is consuming some power, what happens is that the current starts decreasing because energy is being utilized by the resistive component over here, isn't it? That is the reason it starts decreasing slowly and it decays to zero at some point. I hope this point is clear. So after some point based on the value of the inductor that is chosen. So if you are choosing a very large value of the inductor, you can observe a full smooth curve wherein it can go to the next cycle and continue without it being reaching to zero. That is also possible. But in this case, I'm just considering it in discontinuous mode, meaning to say that the output current is not continuous, there will be some drop and it will go to zero. Now what happens to the freewheeling diode waveforms? So the cycle repeats again with respect to voltage and current, which I'm not going to explain, but it is understood. Now what happens to the freewheeling diode current? If you carefully observe for the freewheeling diode, it was acting as open circuit till the completion of the positive half cycle. So that is why it is indicated as zero. When was the current starting to flow in the freewheeling diode? It is basically during the negative half cycle, isn't it? So during this cycle, if you carefully observe, the current is flowing through this path. That means, what is the freewheeling diode current? It is basically equal to I out, isn't it? Whatever is flowing through the load is basically flowing through this path. That means it will instantly follow whatever is I out. So it is rapidly changing to a very high value that is basically I out and it continues to follow the path of I out. Since I out is decaying, I out and IFW are same in this loop. As a result, it will decay in this particular fashion. Again, it will go to zero. Again, in the next cycle, it will start increasing in this particular fashion. I hope this point is clear. So this is how we need to analyze these type of circuits. Now, one important question that you might have is why does a freewheeling diode uh, be used? What is the advantage of it, isn't it? So let's understood, understand that clearly. So the main advantage of freewheeling diode is that it tries to make the load current continuous. So what I'm trying to say is when we have a very large value of inductor that is chosen, the load current can be made continuous in the sense next half cycle, again, it can continue from this point without it going to zero. The reason is if you're using a motor, for example, as a load instead of an RL circuit, what happens? 
if it is going to zero then it will not solve any purpose isn't it only one half cycle you are supplying load another half cycle you are not supplying another half cycle you are supplying load another half cycle you are not supplying if that is the case then there is no point in having such type of a system designing a system like that isn't it so if you choose a value of inductor such that the load current is continuous then it can be used in practical applications that is the reason for it the second most important observation is that it circulates the energy stored in the inductor to the load so we were observing that the current was circulating in the load isn't it in the previous case so the energy that is stored in the inductor it ensures that the current at the load is still flowing so that is another advantage the third advantage is that it prevents negative voltage across the load previously with respect to rl load we had seen that the voltage will go negative during negative half cycle isn't it but in this case if you see it is going to zero which is a good thing because the average output voltage will not reduce it will be slightly on the better side because if there is some waveform coming on the negative side that will affect the overall average output voltage the fourth important observation is that it helps in commutation of scrs so by imposing a reverse voltage across them so the meaning is that with the help of the scr with the help of the uh, inductor we are able to turn off the thyristor as a result what is happening the scr is getting turned off through the commutation process by applying a reverse voltage through the inductor that stores energy according to the property of flin's law so these are the important observations i hope this point is clear in understanding why we need a free willing diode now we need to understand some of the most important equations that we need to derive so these equations you need to understand how it can be derived and then it will be easier for you to solve them using this in numericals rather than only remembering the expression so let us consider the waveforms and start deriving this expressions so average output voltage fundamentally we have seen this in many of the cases in our previous videos isn't it let us consider average output voltage is given as v out v out is equal to 1 by total time period according to the fundamental definition of average value total time period we are going to consider as 2 pi that is t is basically equal to 2 pi integration of alpha to pi alpha is because if you see the output voltage waveform it is starting at alpha and going till pi remaining values are zero so we don't have to worry we are going to only find out the average value at this instant alpha to pi vm sin omega t d omega t v out is equal to we will take vm outside vm by 2 pi integration of sin omega t is basically minus cos omega t alpha to pi v out applying upper and lower limits we will be getting v out is equal to vm by 2 pi into 1 plus cos alpha this is the expression for average output voltage these are required because they might give you a problem and tell you to find out the average output voltage so you need to use this expression to find out that next let us quickly move on to the rms output voltage again rms output voltage is pretty similar so v out rms is equal to from the fundamental definition of rms value square root of 1 by total time period that is 2 pi we are considering alpha to pi vm square sin square omega t into d omega t v out rms is equal to square root of vm square let us take outside by 2 pi alpha to pi we will keep it as it is sin square omega t can be written as 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 into t omega t from here we have seen new, several cases how to derive this in our previous videos so i am not going to go in detail i will just write the final expression for you to make a note of it 
vm by 2 root pi into pi minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha by 2 square root. This is the expression for RMS output voltage. What is the peak inverse voltage? We know that peak inverse voltage is the negative maximum voltage that is appearing across the thyristor. So the peak inverse voltage in this case will be equal to Vm, isn't it? Because during negative half cycle, the maximum negative voltage that is appearing across it is basically Vm. That is the reason peak inverse voltage is equal to Vm. And what is circuit turnoff time? So again, this concept we have seen in our previous videos, I'm going to write the expression. Tc is basically given by pi by omega. So pi is basically the instant at which the duration at which the thyristor is turned off. So if you see pi is the instant at which the thyristor is turned off. As a result, it is Tc is equal to pi by omega. I hope this point is clear. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding of complete operation of a single phase half wave control rectifier with RL load and free wheeling diode. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Thank you.